Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage here in Seattle, Washington for AWS's Marketplace Seller Conference. The big news here is that the Amazon Partner Network and Marketplace coming together and reorganizing into one organization, the AWS Partner Organization, APO, bringing together the best of the partnership and the marketplace to sell through. It's a seller's conference. It's the second year, but technically with COVID, I call it a year and a half. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier, your host. Got a great guest, Leah Purcell, Vice President of Business Development at Foursquare. Leah, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Hey, you look great. Yeah, hey, thanks. Thanks for having me here. So Foursquare, everyone uh, and that has internet history knows, you, you check in, you become the mayor of a place back right. in the day. All fun, it was a great app, and I think it was a competitor, Gowalla sold to Facebook, but that was the beginning of location data. Now you got Uber apps, you got all apps, location everywhere. Um, Data is big. Here in the marketplace, they sell data. They got a data exchange. Chris, head of marketplace, is like, we have all these things, we're going to bring them together, make it simpler. So, you're on the data side. I'm assuming you're selling data and you're participating at the data exchange. What is Foursquare doing right now? Yeah, exactly. So we are part of the data exchange. And you mentioned uh, checking in. So we, we're really proud of our roots, the, the Foursquare app, and that's kind of the basis still of our business. Um, we have um, 100 million data points, which are actually places of interest across uh, the world, 200 countries. And we are, we're in the business of understanding where places are and how people move through those places over time. And what's the value proposition for that data? Are you selling the data? We are selling the data, and we're selling it. You can think about use cases like, um, how can I improve the engagement mm -hmm. um, with my app through location data? So for example, Nextdoor is a customer of ours. Everyone knows Nextdoor. When a new um, business comes online, they want to make sure that the business is a real business. So they use our places to ensure that the address of that business is accurate. So how, did you, how do you guys get your data? Because if you don't have the first party app, you probably had critical mass of data, yeah. but then do other people use your data and then re-contribute back in? Kind of like how Stripe is for financial, you guys are plugging in yeah, to apps? Yeah, it's a great question. So we still do have our consumer okay. apps, we're still proud of those. It's still okay. a basis of our company, really. Okay, so. But we take that data, so our first party data. We also, for all the web, we have some partners that integrate our SDK. Um, and so we're pulling in all that data from various sources and then scrubbing it and making sure we have the most unique. So you guys still have a business where the app's working. Yep. Okay, but also, let's just say I want to have a Cube app. Yeah. And I want to do a check-in button. Yep. So rather than build checking in, could I OEM? You could. Foursquare, is you that? You could, and we could help you understand where people are checking in. So we know someone's here at the Hilton in Bellevue, we know exactly where that place is. You, building the Cube app, you could say, I'm going to check in here, and we are verified. We know that that's the so right that's place. that's good for a developer if they're building an app. Absolutely, so we have an SDK that any developer can integrate. Great, okay, so what's the relationship with the marketplace? Take us through how Foursquare uh, works with AWS Marketplace. Sure, so we are primarily integrated with ADX, which is sort of a piece of marketplace. It's for data specifically. We have both of our main products, which are places, that POI database, mm -hmm. and visits, which is how people move through those places over time. So we're able to say, these are the top chains in the country, here's yeah. how people move throughout those, and both those products are listed yeah. on ADX. So if I'm in Palo Alto and I go to Joe and the Juice, yeah. you know that I kind of hang in one spot, or is it privacy there? I mean, how do you know, like, what goes so on? So we know somebody does that, we don't know <laughs> that you do okay. that. So yeah. we ensure, you know, we're very privacy, centric and privacy focused, we're not going to, we don't tell anybody that you it's yourself. It's pattern are. data. It is. Okay, so it's it. normalized data, right? Over time, groups of people. How and they how are people space. using the data to improve processes, user experience? What are some of the use cases? So that example of Nextdoor, that's really a use case um, that we see a lot and that's improving their application. So that Nextdoor app to ensure that the, the data is accurate and that as you as a user, you know that that business is real because it's verified by Foursquare. Um, another one is, you can use our data to make business decisions around where you're going to place your next locate, you know, your next QSR. So Yum Brands is um, a customer of ours. Those are, those guys are Pizza Hut, KFC. They work with us to figure out where they should put their next KFC. Yeah, I mean retail, location, location, location. Yeah, right? people are still even though e-commerce, right? People still go into stores and still. Yeah, are. and there's, there's probably, there's probably like a lot of math involved in knowing demographics, patterns, volume. Yeah, some of our key. Customers are really data scientists. Like the thing yeah. about with businesses that have true data science companies, they're really looking at that. Yeah, I mean, in and out's on the exit for a reason. Right. They want in and out. Yeah, and so we they don't want to put you. it inland. 
Right, and we can actually tell you where that customer from in and out, where they go next. Right, so then yeah. you know, oh, they go to this park or they go somewhere, and we can help you place your next in and out based on that visitation. Yeah. And so there's real science involved. So take us through the customers. You said data scientists? Mostly data scientists, that's kind of a key um, customer. Data scientists at a large corporation like a QSR. That's somebody. Okay, so how's the procurement process on the marketplace? What does the buyer get? Um, so what we see the real value is, is because they're already a customer of Amazon, that procurement is really easy, right? All the fulfillment goes through Amazon, um, through ADX, um, and what you're buying is either an API, so you can get an API, you can make real-time calls, or you're buying a flat file, like an actual database of those 100 points of interest. And then they integrate into their tool set. Right. They can do it, so it's pretty data-friendly in terms Very. of format. You can kind of do whatever you want with it. Yeah, We're going to give open. you that, as long as you're smart enough to figure out what to do. <laughs> we have a lot of so data So what's your experience with AWS Marketplace? I mean, obviously, we, we see a lot of changes. They had a reorg. Uh, partner network merging with Marketplace. Right. You've been more on the data exchange. Chris kind of called that out. It's, yeah. it's kind of a new thing. And, and he was hinting at a lot of confusion, but simplifying things. Yeah. What's your take of the current AWS Marketplace um, religion? I actually think ADX, because our experience has primarily been ADX, I think they've done a really good job. They've really focused on the data and they understand how, how you know, people like us sell our data. Um, it hasn't been super confusing. We've had a lot of support. I think that's what Amazon gives you. You have to put a lot of effort into it, but they're yeah. also, they also give you a lot of support. Yeah, and, the, and I think data exchange is pretty significant to their strategic it is. mission. It is, we feel that. Yeah. You know, we feel like they really value us as a partner. What's the big thing you're seeing out there right now in data? Because like, you're seeing a lot more data exchanges going on. There's always been data exchange, but you're seeing a lot more um, exchanges between companies. So let's just take uh, partners. You're seeing a lot more people yeah. handle front end of a, a supply chain and you got more data exchanges. What's the future of data exchanges? If you had to kind of you know, guess, given your history in, in the yeah. industry, uh, what's the next around the corner trend? I think, well I think there has to be consolidation. I know everyone's building one, but there's probably too many. Um, I know from our experience, we can't support all of them. Mm -hmm. We're not a huge company. We can't support Amazon and X and Y and Z. Like it's yeah. just too many. So we kind of put all of our eggs in a couple baskets. Um, so I think there'll be consolidation. I think there has to be um, just some innovation on what data products are. It, you know, for us, we have these two. It's an API and a flat file. I think as exchanges think about you know, expanding, yeah. what are the other types of data products um, that can help us build? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that's, you know, we see, we cover a lot of on theCUBE is Edge. You know, you got yeah. Amazon putting out new products in regions, you got new wavelengths out there, you got regions, you got city level uh, connectivity, data coming from cars. So a lot more IOT data. How do you guys see that folding into your vision of data acquisition and data usage, leverage, reuse? Durability. These yeah, are I mean, we're we're keeping an eye on all of that. I, you know, I think we haven't quite figured out how we want to allocate resources <laughs> against it, but you know, it's definitely it's a really interesting space to be in. Like, I don't think data is going anywhere, and I think it's really just going to grow and how people use yeah. it is going to expand. Okay, so if I'm a customer, I go to the marketplace, I want to buy four square data. What's the pitch? Um, we can help you improve your business decisions or your applications through location data. We know where places are and how people move through the world over time. So we can tell you, we're, we're sure that this is the Hilton in Bellevue. We know that. We know how many people are moving through here, and that's really the pitch. And they use that for whatever their needs are, business improvement, um, user experience. Yeah, those are really the primary. I mean, we also have some financial um, use cases, so head funds. Maybe they're thinking about yeah. how they want to invest their money. They're going to look at visits over time to understand <laughs> what people are doing, yeah. right? The yeah. pandemic made that super important. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, uh, this is great, great success story. Congratulations, and thanks thank for you. sharing on theCUBE. Really appreciate you coming on. Thank uh, you. My final question is more about kind of the future. I want to get your thoughts because you're a seasoned pro. Um, when you have the confluence of physical and digital coming together, yeah. you know, I was just talking with a, a friend about FedEx's earnings, comparing that to say AWS has a fleet of delivery too. Amazon, right. Amazon not AWS. So, but physical world only products, location matters, but then what about the person when they're walking around the real world? What happens when they get to the metaverse? Or, you know, they get to digital, they attend an event. Yeah. How do you see that crossover? Because you have, 
a foot in both camps. We do. You got the app and you got the physical world. It's going to come together. Is there thoughts around, uh, you can take your Foursquare hat off and put your yeah, industry hat on yeah. if you want to answer that, not officially on behalf of Foursquare, but I'm just curious. This is, a, this is the confluence of like the blending of physical and digital. Yeah, I know. Um, wow, I admittedly haven't thought a whole lot about <laughs> that. I think it would be really weird if I could track myself over time in the metaverse. Um, I mean, I think, yeah, as you said, it's, it's By the way, I'm not, I'm not bullish on the metaverse when it's block diagrams, when you have gaming platforms that are like the yeah. best visual experience possible. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think it, I think we'll see. I don't, I don't know that yeah. I have a prediction. Well, hybrid, I'm mean, seeing a lot of hybrid events. Like this event right. uh, is still intimate VIP, but next year, I guarantee you, it's going to be larger. Much larger. And it's going to be physical and face-to-face, -face, but, but digital right. as well. Yeah. Not have people experiencing the, that Both. first party physical digital hybrid. Yeah. And it's interesting, it's something that we track a lot of. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think we'll have, a, I think we'll, there's something there for us. I think the, the, there's a play there as we watch awesome. kind of things change. All right, Leah, thank you for coming on theCUBE. Thank Appreciate you so much. it. All right, with Foursquare. I'm John Furrier checking in with Foursquare here on theCUBE, here at the Amazon Web Services Marketplace Seller Conference, second year back from the pandemic in person. Uh, more coverage after this short break.